welcome to another episode of decaf earl grey tea with milk and sugar with stacy um it's not really what it's called but i can drink whatever i want so um it's been a long time since i've recorded one of these someone thought i quit i didn't quit um i was just taking a break for the summer which is healthy you know you need a break um i had a great summer tim and i i'll make this short because i'm sure you if you want an update, you can read it on the blog. I don't want to bore you with duplicate information, but um, Tim and I went to South Dakota. We saw Mount Rushmore, Crazy Horse, the Badlands, Buffalo. Uh, we hopped into Wyoming and saw Devil's Tower. It's like one of those all-American vacations. Um, and being from the East Coast, it's something that's not really, it doesn't feel practical to do when you live all the way out, like, you know, on the Eastern seaboard. So um, now that we're in Minnesota, we could drive to all these things and we had a really great time. Uh, Tim's parents came to visit, my parents visited, um, chaos ensued. No, it was just a busy but really exciting summer. So I appreciate that everyone's been pretty understanding that some things gotta go. They gotta give. Um, so I didn't record any Coffee with Stacy episodes, but it's fall. We're back in action, school's in, all hands on deck. So today, I'm, well, I'll tell you a little bit about some new things that have been happening. And then um, today's theme is socks. So I know we have both knitters and crocheters who watch. Um, and I have a collection of knitted socks. So these are socks that I wear like on my feet. Um, I have them here. I realize there's a pair missing, whatever. Okay, that's just how it is. Eh, here, there. So, um, here in Minnesota, uh, I just checked the weather. It's 44 degrees right now. Um, October's tomorrow, and it's pretty chilly. So, I've already, um, you know, gotten out that big Tupperware box of winter clothes and swapped out my summer clothes and socks are part of that. So I'm going to be going through my different pairs of socks and talking about yarn choices, pattern choices, things I like, things I didn't like. Um, I recorded before, I guess about a year or so ago, I did a similar thing with my shawls and people loved it and I know why and it's because when you make a project, you take a photo of it and you put it on Ravelry, right? or you put it on your blog or you put it wherever. And the information you get about that is how does it look right now, right after it's off the needles. And usually it looks great and you don't hear anything about those projects ever again. And what I find, and I find it really frustrating as a knitter, is that certain yarns don't hold up or certain patterns, even though they were super cute, they don't fit when you actually try and wear them. So this is like an update of how these things fared after, I mean, some of these I've had for years. And I think that's really beneficial to talk about because it can help you make choices when you're picking something for your next project. Cause you don't want to spend all this time knitting or crocheting and you know, you wear it once and then once you wash it, it looks like. So this is, I think is a really fun chat to have. So what's been going on? Um, the most exciting news, if you don't know already, is that we're expecting a baby in January. This is, you know, perhaps the most exciting thing in my life. So I've promised numbers of people a bump shot. Wait, hold on. Okay. Ta-da! Can you see that? Sorry, I can't, I don't have one of those fancy cameras where I can see what you're seeing, so I'll just keep moving around. Do the hula. I'm very proud of my little bump. Um, I'm also sporting, this is a recent knit, I knit it this summer on vacation called Abalone and I added sleeves and I think it's a really great thing to accommodate changing features um, and it didn't use that much yarn so I did it sort of as a stash buster because I only had four skeins of this mustard which isn't really enough, it was like four, da, da, da. I guess that was about 670 yards of worsted weight yarn which wasn't really enough for like a full full sweater but it was enough to do this and I added some stripes which is a good way to stretch the yarn um, and I really like it so that thunk you might have just heard hold on let me find you one it's fall right I said that so one of my favorite things about fall so the thunk hold on 
sorry, I'm getting one for you. That was a thunk from my hackberry tree. So if you're not familiar, well, let me back up. If you don't know already, I like foraging for mushrooms. And I think maybe I've talked about my mushroom club before. Um, very safely, only go with experienced people who know what's going on. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. But I, in general, like finding food for free, because like, why not? So one thing that's kind of exciting is a hackberry. And I'm not, disclaimer, disclaimer, encouraging you to eat something that you don't know what it is, okay? Um, I know for sure that this is a hackberry tree. Um, actually, we had to have the tree trimmed so an arborist came to our house and told me it was a hackberry tree. Um, there are some distinguishing characteristics about a hackberry tree that, um, are very notable. Where is a good leaf? So one of them, sorry, hold on. I'll find a leaf. Hold on, hold on. Um, right, so one of them, and this sounds kind of gross, but hackberries very often have an infestation that's some sort of, who knows what, it's a, like a thing. And so their leaves, in addition to being shaped, you know, like that, have these bumps on them that is often used as an identifier of the tree and they have these little berries so what's my point so a berry just fell and kerplunked if you couldn't hear it sorry but it kerplunked really loud and these are really yummy so <laughs> they're not you won't find them in the store because there's so little to so this is how big it is okay i'm gonna eat one now i'll tell you why it takes so long in a minute there's a giant pit in the middle. The pit is this big. So if you compare it to how he used to be, it's almost all pit. So you're just like eating the skin, but it tastes like a date. It's actually really good. So I'm a fan of my hackberries. I wouldn't like harvest them because it's really time consuming, but I do nibble them. <clears throat> and you know, when the end of the world comes, I'm kidding, but <laughs> we have hackberries. They're supposed to be really high in calories and good for you. Ta-da! Anyway, that's one thing I like about fall. It's my hackberries. Don't eat anything unless you actually know what it is, okay? I'm saying that out loud. Um, and I know people have may have concerns because I'm just eating something that fell on the ground. I for real know it's a hackberry tree and that they're edible. I did my research, it's okay. Don't fret, I know there's fretters out there. <laughs> so anyway, back on topic, what's new? So fall is like go time. Um, part of it is because um, I'm getting ready for the holiday season with Fresh Stitches. Lots of people place kit orders for um, giving as gifts or maybe they make the animal and then give the animals a gift, so that's one Thing. But another thing is just like it's winter and people are, well it's fall, but people are thinking about cold things, they want to do some more crocheting. Um, so like of any time of the year, this is when it's like nose to the grindstone deer stuff. So um, the preparations, I think I probably told you, started in spring about what's new, what's going to happen. Um, so I've introduced some new things for fall that have kept me super busy. So one thing that I'm really, really, really excited about, and I did bring a sample, and I re now realize the second thing I didn't bring a sample, but you'll just have to bear with me. Um, I'm now selling eyes in the shop. So I'm really, and I have hair on them. They don't usually have hair. Um, I'm really excited about this because um, if you live, well, if you live anywhere, it doesn't matter, um, stores like Joann's, Michael's, uh, Walmart, whatever, any stores that you tend to get your crafting things from have been carrying eyes less and less. And um, I'm going to open this one just to show you what kind of eyes I really like using. So um, I like using plastic eyes. I think they get, of course, if you're crocheting for a baby, you wouldn't want to put these on. But if you're crocheting for a slightly older child, I think they give the piece a really nice finished look. And I use them on almost all of my samples um, for the stuffed animals I make. And 
they have these ridges on them and they have a plastic washer so sometimes you might see them with a metal washer i don't like the metal washer because i find as i'm pushing it on that the washer can bend and then you don't get the like you know like like doesn't stick on as good okay um the ridges i really like because it means it goes on really evenly so like let's say you're shoving it through like a really dense layer of fabric or sometimes like a nelson owl you're pushing it through three layers of crocheted fabric and if you don't have the ridges it's just like a tube and you can't make sure the washer's on straight because there's no like you know system so I really like this kind. You can put them on, you click, and every click you hear, you know it's getting tighter. So this is the kind of eye I really like, and it can be hard to find them. And honestly, even when I find them in Joy and Fabrics, they're, I think it's $1.99 for three pair. You know, I mean, okay, that is worth it because that's like 75 cents a piece, and for the beautiful stuffed animal you're making, that's worth it, but, that's kind of pricey for people who make a lot of them. So um, this is something I've been planning for a little while. So I now have a source for eyes and I'm stocking them in the shop. And I have six millimeter, which are super tiny and really cute. Eight, 12, and 18 millimeter. 12 is the normal that I use a lot. And then 18 millimeter are like these bigger ones. And also um, a nose. I mean, there's I have, it's one shape of nose, but I have more than one in stock like you know i don't just have one nose to sell um <laughs> it's one shape of nose and i'm really excited about this because people always ask me where to get eyes and um you know this way i feel really comfortable recommending them because i have it in my little hand and i can see that they're really good quality um and that there's something i feel comfortable recommending and i have the different sizes and in a lot of cases hold on tea break um, in a lot of cases, they don't add any additional shipping cost to your order. So if you order a kit, and you can you can order some eyes, and they don't weigh very much, so you can just put them in, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So I'm really excited about that. People have been taking advantage of this new feature, and I've been packing a lot of eyeballs. So um, it's a good thing. I like my label. See, isn't my label cute? Um, I bought a bazillion labels, so I think that's good news because um, I'm packing a lot of eyes. So I'm really excited about that. Um, this is 25 pairs. Um, I have, you can buy like one, three, or 10 pairs. And the more you buy, the more you save. So I think if you buy three pairs, you save 5%. 10 pair, you save 10%. And then if you buy 50 pair, which are two of these baggies, you save 15%. So anyway i'm really excited about that i know it's silly but um i want people to be able to get all of the things that they want easily and having a hack break um since the stores aren't really carrying them anymore and i mean i also some there are websites that sell eyes right um but it can be sort of annoying sometimes to pay a really big shipping charge for you just need a few eyes. So um, I'm really happy that I can offer it um, at a reasonable combined shipping price. Um, the price of the eyes is pretty competitive and I'm stoked. Um, and I already have to buy a lot of eyes anyway for the kits that I do. So it seems sort of natural for me. Um, I'm scheme, this is really the, the tea and hackberry episode. Um, I'm scheming about adding different kinds of eyes. So um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. That was another hackberry. <laughs> if you hear any thunks, that's what it is. Um, the other thing I'm doing, there we go, okay, I'll stop, um, is making some new patterns to get ready for the fall. So every year, I mean, obviously, Hollow whether or not you celebrate these holidays for me as an American um, living where I do Halloween Thanksgiving Christmas um, I should say a Christian heritage American um, I know not everyone celebrates all those holidays um, though you know those happen and they have these characters associated with them so for you know years now I've been making a Santa a reindeer a turkey a 
smaller turkey, a pumpkin, and I was sort of worried I'm a pilgrims, right? When am I gonna run out of these things to, to do for these holidays? And a couple months ago, it just hit me like, Halloween, I don't have a mummy. Like, that's a really important thing. I also don't have a witch, but I don't think that's happening this year. Um, and so my new pattern that's coming out next week, keep your peepers peeled, is a mummy. Isn't he cute? So I'm, I really like this guy. Um, I think his body shape's really cute, but the innovation for the mummy is his wraps. So um, I include instructions for how to put on, see these little wraps he has? He's so cute. You put them on after you've done your crocheting and there's even instructions for little pieces that sort of like dangle off because you know, mummies are like that. Um, I just think he's really cute. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty pleased with him. So he's like this year's holiday guy who's coming out. I think he's just really precious. And I don't always um, add on facial features um, like felt. So one thing that's really important to me is that you're able to replicate the product like it looks like in the photo. So I don't like cutting out really complicated shapes because you might not be able to cut it out and have it look the same way. But I thought this smile was really simple um, and it just made him look really cute. And you could always embroider it on if you'd want instead. So he has 12 millimeter eyes. So anyway, he's super cute. I'm really excited about it. Um, I have instructions for doing the wrap so when it crosses over, it looks really nice and flat like it does. I don't know if you can see crosses around his body. Um, so I'm really proud of him from a cuteness perspective, but also from an instruction writing perspective. I think this is a good technique and people who are adventurous are going to not only be able to do this, you don't have to be too adventurous to do him, but to take those instructions and use them on other things, which I really love. So that's what's happening um, now. Oh, right, the other, sorry, the other thing that I didn't bring the sample of is I now offer deluxe kits in the shop. So um, I've already had, so a kit has yarn that you need to make a pattern, a printed pattern in eyes in a little baggie with a ribbon. And uh, I've had starter kits, which also have a tapestry needle, a bent tip one, which are hard to find in stores, a crochet hook with fresh stitches written on it. That was new last year. Um, two locking stitch markers for counting your rounds and an owl button. So now I offer also deluxe kits, which are the basic kit, the yarn, the pattern, the eyes, plus a snail tape measure, which is like for real cute. I'm sort of mad I didn't bring one out. Um, and a Fresh Stitches project bag, which is also really cute. So, um, and those have been going really well. So I'm really excited about that. And I've been winding like crazy. <laughs> um, because like I said, fall's just that time when people are raring to go. And so I'm sort of struggling to keep up, but that's okay. <laughs> that's a good sign. So that's what's up. Um, I'm just gonna take these pair of socks. I'm gonna pull each one out. I haven't prepared this. I actually just pulled them out of my sock drawer a minute ago, you know, before recording. And so some of them I might not remember the exact pattern. For all of them, they're in my Ravelry project page. They, they have a Ravelry project page in my Ravelry notebook. Is it my notebook? Whatever that thing's called. So you can go look through them and see what exact pattern or yarn I used. All right, socks number one. And there's a theme, so you'll catch on. These are the first, no, these are the second pair of socks I made. The first, okay, so the first pair of socks I made were from Antje Gillingham's book, Gillingham, Gillingham, um, on knitting two socks at a time on two circulars. I'll put a link to that book because I really recommend it love it i love knitting on circulars i'm not the biggest fan of double points so i knit those socks and i knit them from an acrylic i can't even remember what it was now it was a self-striping acrylic i want to say it was made by plymouth um who knows anyway um they were worsted weight which is a really great way to start your socks uh, start knitting socks because they finish fast you sort of get the techniques down and um, 
and I wore a hole through the heel and I darned them and then they started to go again and I was just like you know these aren't the specialist socks in the world like let's call it a day so they're in the rub they're in the I almost said rubbish I talked to my husband too much they're in the trash um that's how it goes the second pair I knit were these guys so they're the same pattern that I was just talking to you about they're um, worsted weight socks from the book two socks on two circulars um that's Jackson the next door neighbor dog um <laughs> he's barky <laughs> that's cool um they um you'll just have to ignore that that's that's how my life is um, it's funny, I have a story about Jackson. So Jackson, he's really cute. I mean, he's, I grew up with a Rottweiler, so I absolutely love big dogs and he's a Doberman. And they, I mean, they bark like they're guard dogs. So um, we moved here and I would tell Tim, uh, like this dog, like every time he comes outside, he barks, like I don't know what's with him. And Tim's like, that's so weird. I never hear him bark. And I think it's because he's just out during the day and I'm home during the day that I hear him because at night he doesn't come out a lot, which is when Tim's home. And he's like, that's so weird. I never hear Jackson bark. So you're hearing Jackson bark, you know the story. He barks. Um, anyway what oh these socks okay so these socks were knit from the same pattern that i was telling you about earlier um and these are gosh um it's a wool i think it might actually yeah it's cat i think it, i'm pretty sure it's cascade 220 it's definitely not the superwash so it's a hundred percent wool which wool is really good for socks because it's well there's a lot of properties okay so it's warm like it's cold here. If you're going to knit a sock, it should be warm. Um, and uh, what's the other, oh, the other thing that's good about wool is a little gross, but it's true. Um, it absorb, wool can absorb, I think it's 30% of its weight in water without feeling wet. So that's why, um, you know, the traditional Aran sweaters that like, they also might be called fisherman sweaters, like those cabled white sweaters. Um, the reason they were really popular in Ireland and uh, is for nautical reasons, like people on boats get sprayed with water and the wool absorbs the water and you don't feel cold from it, right? So if co cotton, like a cotton shirt, um, it absorbs the water but you feel it on your skin and that's why sometimes if you wear cotton you can sort of like shiver in the summer because you're sweating too much, if you know what I mean. So wool absorbs water, which is actually really good because um, if you have sweaty feet, you may naturally have sweaty feet or you may be the kind of person who puts on some boots that are rated to like minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit and it's not that cold out and your feet get sweaty. Your feet don't get cold and clammy in wool. And they also don't get like wrinkly, like you know how, you know how your feet can get wrinkly if they're too wet, like bathtub syndrome. Um, that doesn't happen with wool. So I really, really, really like wool. It also, um, sorry, people, I'm lose. I'm gonna lose fans. I can tell. Um, it also doesn't get stinky. So like, you know, there have been times I've worn a pair of wool socks two days in a row, and you know it's okay because it's wool. Um, that's why hikers actually really like wool too. It, they don't get like stinky, sweaty like cotton gym socks do. Anyway, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I'm just telling you, it's an option. It's an option. Um, we're all pressed for time. You gotta make it work sometime. So these socks, I really do love wool socks. Um, they, I knit a very short cuff because I was sort of like in a hurry and wanted to get to the sock part. Um, practically speaking, it's not that useful to have a really thick wool sock with an ankle cuff. Um, <laughs> You know, it doesn't happen that often that you need one of those. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is one of the recurring themes. Because it's not superwash wool, it's felting. Um, I've never accidentally put these in the washing machine, but um, felting just requires wetness and agitation. If your feet sweat, you have wetness. And if your foot is in a shoe, and your foot moves or the shoe moves whatever you have agitation so that's enough to cause felting um it either can be a problem or it might not be a problem so with these particular socks it's felted along the sole but because it's felting while my foot's in it they're not shrinking so they're not 
not fitting. They fit fine. Um, they're just becoming like thicker and denser on the sole. So um, you'll see as I go through these socks, I really do recommend, um, even if you're fine with hand washing your socks, which I am, I like, you know, washing my socks, um, to use a superwash wool because felting happens and if you're planning on having the socks for a long time, they're gonna felt, which is really annoying. Actually, I'll just go through my socks that felt first. Um, this yarn, super disappointing. Um, it's Cherry Tree Hill, I think, and I think they're out of business, which, you know, <clears throat> that happens. Um, it was a super wash wool, and it's completely felted. Uh, and like after the first time I wore them, drove me batty. So not only is it felting, but you can tell there's like this halo. I mean, it's, dude, it's just falling apart. So um, the sock pattern though was kind of fun, but I will tell you the caveat. So these were knit, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me, from the book Sock Knitting Masterclass, I think. Um, where you use a lot of different techniques so it's great for learning so this um like what this sock has is it has ribbing at the i don't know what part of the sock that's called but it's above the heel at where your um, achilles tendon is so your ankle's really small here and so it cinches it which is really great and cool and it has um these were toe up so it has an interesting toe construction um it has different stitches on the bottom as compared to the instep they were really fun to knit um the yarn choice was awful because it's felted like a lot um and the other downside is the there's interesting patterning on the cuff and you'll see that a lot in like fancy sock patterns because you want it to be interesting that's when you're wearing a shoe that's the only part you see um i don't find them that comfortable to wear because ribbing slurps in so that's what keeps it nice and tight around your leg. When there's a fancy stitch pattern, it doesn't do as much slurping. So if I compare this sock, well, to this sock, which is, um, they're similar sizes actually, but you can tell the cuff is much different. And that's really just because of the ribbing. Um, like they're the same number of stitches, if you can believe it. So um, these were fun to knit. I probably wouldn't do them again because of um, that cuff issue and these are sort of the ones that get left like in the sock drawer you know you always have your least favorite that you're wearing and then um you know they're left behind <laughs> so um this pair of socks so these are from trekking um it's a german yarn uh, i can't remember any more information than that this was the first pair of socks i knit on um small needles right so i told you i started with the worsted weight pair so this was probably my third pair of socks and i knit them on a nine inch circular which is the way i prefer to knit my socks given like all of my druthers um i knit these well okay i have two things to say first of all um most sock patterns call for like a one and a half size two needle two and a half needle like that's the normal fingering weight uh needle usage it depends on your knitting style though so i use a two i was going to knit these socks for the first time and um someone who worked at my yarn store was like i always knit socks on zeros um i didn't find out until much later that she's an incredibly loose knitter like she always used like three sizes smaller than everyone else. So in order to make these socks fit me, I had to knit many more stitches um, because I was on a zero, such a small size. So I learned that lesson, like do your own darn gauge swatch. Um, don't listen to your friends. And um, these, I think the color is super fun. It's, um, the, which one? I can tell which sock I knit first. So see how much this one stretches and then see how tight this one is. So when I, this was the first sock I did and when I cast on, I cast on too tightly and it's sort of hard to put my foot in, but it makes, it just fits in. Um, I knit these when, um, there was a summer, it was, was it the, 
ooh, I want to say it was like the second summer I was dating Tim and he was teaching, no, he was a student um, at a summer school in France. And so I went to visit him and um, I brought these socks as like my travel project. And when I got to the toe, I didn't have, so when you, the downside of knitting on nine inch circulars is you need double points or a second nine inch circular to do the toe because this part is too small for the nine inches. Um, and I use toothpicks. So you, it works. So a toothpick is about a size one, if you were curious, um, knitting needle. This sock has the same problems that the previous socks I've showed you has. It's not a super wash yarn and um, it's felting pretty bad. Um, so if I show you, this is the instep, so I can show you it stretches pretty good. I don't know if you can see that. If I go to the heel where, you know, you step all the time, I'm pull for real, I'm pulling. Um, it doesn't stretch and that's because it's felting. So you can probably like tell my lesson here, like use a super wash wool. I have one more that's felting, um, but I wanna show these to you because I think they're really important. So these socks, I think maybe these could be from the sock knitting master class. Anyway, go on my Ravelry page if you really wanna know the patterns. Um, this sock is very interesting construction wise. So, um, but let me tell you about the yarn first. So the yarn is from Lion Brand, but you won't find it. It's I got it from their studio store in Manhattan. Um, it's one of their like special li special lines, so you don't always find it in big box stores where you find other Lion Brand things. And it's a year. It's called like 1876 or 1720. It's it's 100% um, fingering weight wool. Um, and I dyed it with Kool-Aid. So the reason I bought it was for dyeing it and I've used it for lots of shawls. It's really inexpensive. It takes the color super well. So this is two um, colors of Kool-Aid. Um, I dyed it using um, a technique for making self-striping yarn. Um, I have that on my blog. Um, just search for Kool-Aid long colorways. And people ask me how the colors hold up. And like, I've had these socks for years and I wear them and I wash them and I wear them enough that the soles have felted. Same old story, right? Um, and the color is perfectly fine. Um, the only thing, and I'm actually not sure if this, I mean, if so you can tell like right here at the join, there's orange and blue sort of right, right there are a little mixed and I honestly don't know if that's um, from bleeding as I wash them or if that was how I dyed it. I can't even remember but as you can see like the color doesn't go away like this orange is pretty bright um, and the pattern so this is a toe up sock um, it had a nice toe construction I think it's called a moccasin toe where it has like a little band around um, that was fun to do I don't necessarily think it's that much more comfortable um, and it has a short row heel I um, after wearing these I don't like a short row heel I don't think it fits my foot as well it could be well it could be my kind of foot possibly um, it could also be that this yarn is felting a little and the more I wear them the less well it fits which is completely possible that's not the heels fault at all um, excuse me the other thing I think it is is that a lot of times when I do a heel flap I put some ribbing in the heel which sort of sucks it around my Achilles tendon area and these just sort of they're just straight um, I don't have a lot of ribbing on the cuff um, so some of those things are just my fault and some of those things I think just mean that the short row heel doesn't fit my foot that well say la vie okay the next almost every sock that's left um, is using my favorite pattern so my favorite sock pattern is church mouse yarn and tees that's like the name of a store, um, basic sock pattern. So it's a pattern that's written for both sport weight and fingering weight yarn. And they give you options for if you want to rib the whole cuff down, if you want to rib on the instep and whatnot. So I'll show you that, but the base, that's the pattern that's for all the rest of my socks. I just love it. I like the way it fits. Um, this yarn is Knit Picks Felici. So it's a self-striping yarn. I think it's so super fun. Um, and I have, um, I don't know if I'd say I have a small foot. I wear a size seven, seven and a half. So I have a small-ish foot. And um, 
with a 440, um, obviously I didn't weave in my end very well, um, with a 440 yard um, ball, which I think is two balls of the Felici, but one skein of some larger ones, um, I can make quite long socks. So that's another thing to think about when you're picking a yarn is the um, yardage enough for you to really get the sock that you want. Um, in this particular one, I did ribbing on the instep. That's the name of this top thing. Um, and they fit really well, because ribbing slurps, and it just fits super nice around your foot. Some people can do some ribbing on the sole, like in the arch area. And um, these are super wash. They wear super well. Um, I really just love these socks. They're they're fun. I mean, why not have your socks be like some funky colors or whatever? Um, sad news. Prepare for it. Um, I'm going to show you a lot of socks out of Knit Picks Felici because I like, I love self-striping yarns. So the, a self-striping yarn is any yarn that makes stripes as you knit it instead of speckles. So um, this yarn while it's super cool makes speckles and not stripes. Um, Knit Picks has discontinued the Felici. Sad face. So um, one of my blog posts I'm planning for this week is some other sources of self-striping yarn um, that are available because it's really hard to find because it's really hard to dye. It's really time consuming um, to dye and so uh, you can't find a lot of it. But if you follow um, Susan B. Anderson's blog, she knits a ton of socks from self-striping yarns. They're always gorgeous. Like, this is the simplest pattern, and yet they look really intricate because of the yarn. So, sad news, but maybe happy news. Um, th this guy, same deal, Knit Picks Felici. Um, well, I have something to say in a second, but um, this one I did not rib all the way down. Um, it's, ac it's just faster to not rib, so that's like a decision you make um, when you're knitting. Um, they fit just fine because I have this ribbing at the top. In like my perfect world, I'd knit all of them with the ribbing, but sometimes I'm just like, I want a mindless project, I just want to do it, and I don't always do it. So, and this one, you'll see. Um, I don't know what happened. I One's much smaller than the other one. I whatever I started the toe decreases early um, this one fits perfectly this one's a little small but it like just fits so it's one of those things where it never really seemed worth taking out and fixing but yeah I notice when I get dressed in the morning I notice oh well <laughs> this is my third Felici one love the rainbow so much fun like I feel happy when I put them on they're just like super delightful I love them um, the yarns pilling a tiny bit because I wear it so much but I mean that happens um, see this is like pilling um, but they're so fun and I really love them so those are those socks um, keeping with the same pattern this is um, a sport weight yarn so it's cascade sport superwash so using the same um, church mouse pattern has the ribbing on it. I knit these socks so they're a little thicker and a little faster. Um, in uh, for like which should you do? Worst uh, sorry, a fingering weight or sport weight? In the so like I like knitting socks as like I put one in my bag and I just sort of like do a couple rounds, you know, not thinking about it. And then if I get to the heel flap or the toe decreases, I have to be like, whoa, okay, like, hang on a second. You know, I have to take out a half hour or whatever to really like think about what I'm doing. So if I'm at that part of the sock, then it's no longer a travel project. It's like a pay attention project. Um, the disadvantage, so it, these are quick to do because it's thicker yarn, but the disadvantage is sort of like, I mean, if you look at this sock, right? I did the heel flap. You can tell the gusset decreases end here. And then the toe decreases start here. So there's not a lot of boring knitting time. So I tend to not think they're the best project for me because of how I knit them. If you just want to knit a sock, like these are faster. And the thickness isn't 
disturbing. So the worsted weight socks, you really feel like, oh, I'm pulling on some thick socks. These ones I don't feel are super thick. So they're good, but they don't, for me, they're not things I like knitting all the time. Same pattern. This yarn is really special to me. So um, two years ago, I don't know, I uh, Tim had something in uh, Santa Cruz and I went with him and um, in Oakland, California, there's a verb for keeping warm. So if you, um, whatever, if you're in the, the Twitterverse or Instagram or follow blogs, they just have a gorgeous shop and I had heard about that, you know, there are these stores you hear about before you even really hear about them, you know? So it's just such a lovely store. And so I went and, you know, I like mushrooms. These socks are from yarn that was naturally dyed with mushrooms. And while I was there, I got the chance to meet the girl who actually works there and she finds the mushrooms and she dyes the yarn like in sh in house like you can go out back and see the drying racks and i just thought that was super cool because uh, i've been to a lot of yarn stores you can probably imagine and um many of them are quite nice but a lot of yarn stores i'd say gosh i'll go with 80 percent of yarn stores are purchasing yarn from a catalog um you know they have cascade they have barocco noro Debbie Bliss, what you know, they're buying the stock from the same place as everyone else is, which is fine. And you know, if I want to knit a sweater, I'm going to be buying something like Cascade that's not too pricey, right? And so I understand why it's the bread and butter of most stores. But the thing for me that makes a yarn store really special is if they have things that you can only get there or that they curate their content in a certain way. And so some stores carry these indie dyers that are either local or that like some people just have a great eye for color and they mix and match things in certain ways. And so that this store dyes their own yarn and sells it, I just thought was super special. Couldn't get it anywhere else. And I, I actually really love this color. Like, I just think it's such a cute tan and, um, you can see a lot of my socks have this red on the bottom because for a while I had this pair of shoes that had red insoles and it stained all my socks. Um, that's okay. So that's what, um, in Japanese there's a word for that. It's called wabi-sabi. I mean, it's two words, but it basically means um, like uh, beauty, like the beauty that comes with wearing things, like or using things. So like if your mug has a crack in it, um, Mine doesn't have a crack, but like I have a strange line of almost a crack. Um, that's just like, you can look at it and just be like, oh yeah, like I've had this mug. I got this mug when I started college, right? That was 2001. I've had this mug for 14 years. Like, it's cool. Like, it can have cracks. And like, I think of that pair of shoes every time I see these red weird marks on it like it's not sad it's not broken it's just like the beauty that comes along with being well worn um it's like wrinkles like I found or I saw a wrinkle well I saw a wrinkle it's not a consistent wrinkle but I saw a little wrinkle like once a little while ago and I was just so happy because like I earned that wrinkle like it was like here and you only get that from smiling. Like I smiled so much that my face changed and that's awesome. Like babies don't have those, like cranky people don't have those. I earned it. And so that's how I feel when something weird happens to my socks. Um, a hole is a different story. We have a couple nails in our wood floors that even though I nail them down very often, they, um, interfere with my socks. So um, holes, which are damaging and a little sad, um, are bad for hand knit socks. So when I walk around my house, because I have wood floors, um, and also socks are slippy, and I have, um, uh, they're called widow maker steps, like we have really, really steep stairs. Um, I wear slippers, so ugh, these are, sorry if that's obscene, these are my Ugg boots. Um, I only wear them in the house, they're slippers. Um, in Australia, Ugg, I mean, before the company Ugg became popular, Ugg boots were just the name of sheepskin boots. 
it's a generic name um, that like little slippers and they don't even have to have hard soles um, that you just wear around like house slippers um, so um, have Ugg boots and um, some Australians perhaps including Tim are a little cranky that there's this company called Ugg like because he feels like they sort of stole the name you know it'd be like um, I guess it'd be like a company calling themselves mug like you don't own all the mugs you're just you're just calling yourself mug so anyway that's if you were curious about Ugg boots so I wear um, slippers inside the house um, to kind of protect my socks and also to not fall on my tushy when I'm walking around um, I fell down the stairs once and that learned my lesson <laughs> This pair of socks, I would say, is my favorite, probably my favorite yarn. Like, isn't it just crazy? <laughs> I love them. Um, it's from Wild Hair, who's a um, indie dyer. I got them at the Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet Festival, but she also has an Etsy store. Um, the Etsy store, to my recollection, isn't always like well stocked um but I'm sure you could email her or ask you know if you're looking for a particular thing I just love the rainbow plus the black like I think that's super cool they were really fun to knit um these socks so I don't know if you can tell but um each color like if you just start looking at a particular place each color only goes about 10 stitches and then the next color starts. So overall, it looks a little, I guess, splotchy, you know, but um, this wouldn't be called a self-striping sock yarn um, because it's not like making real stripes. Um, the black colorway in here is much longer, so there is some technique to doing that. But um, I just think they're so cool, so fun. They're another pair that make me really happy when I put them on. Um, and, oh, this is,